So in our Hawaiian Volcano Summary this week, uh, Kilauea Southwest Rift erupted briefly last week, and its fishers continue to spew gas and glow for several days after that. But now the glow has ceased, and the gas emissions are back to background. Uh, since gas was a major impact from eruption that produced VOG island-wide, the air has been a lot better on the island uh, over the last few days here. On the actual eruption site, there was tremor persistent for several days after the eruption was over, suggesting that magma continued to intrude that southwest rift zone past eruption site for several days after that. And this satellite image that you can see here is showing the progression of the dike past the fissures an extra four miles down the rift there. So that's, that's the range of effect of the events Last week, it was a combination of an eruption and an intrusion with the intrusion spanning a much greater distance down the rift here. If we look at the S1 camera time lapse since eruption, we can see that over the first few nights, there is glow that diminishes every night. Gas is still being emitted as the magma is flowing underneath that rift, rift zone area. And then the glow dies off, and so does the gas. Um, by about four or five days after that. And that's the view from the S1 web camera out in the Southwest Rift. I'll let it play all the way to today. And you can see how quiet it is and how little gas is coming out at present here now. Oh, it just looped its way back there. All right. So looking at the ground tilt, this is a Sand Hill station. The eruption occurred on June 3rd here. And following the eruption, we had a big deflation of the ground that lasted only a couple of days before inflation resumed at a fairly high rate here. This is a gain of perhaps 60, 70 micro radians in the last week. So a sizable increase that has recently mellowed a little bit here within the last couple of days. Still, this is showing that the volcano it's still filling with magma and it's still pressurizing and tilting the ground out. And the intrusion and eruption that occurred last week only did a little bit of work to relieve that pressure that still continues to build underground. If we look at the earthquake rates for the last month, this was the prequel to our eruption. We had earthquakes diminish for the next few days uh, pretty to a, a pretty low level and then resumed with a, another pulse a few days later. And earthquakes have built back up fairly quickly in the summit area around the South Caldera and the Kauai Fault Zone, Upper East Rift, just like before. Looking at the map, you can see here, I'm going to zoom it in to this area, showing the South Caldera cluster a little bit into the Southwest Rift connector, Upper Southwest Rift and the Upper East Rift as well. And then these are the areas that border the Kauai Fault Zone, as we've discussed for many months now. That's the story here on Kilauea. Uh, on Mauna Loa, it's been fairly quiet here at earthquake rates over the last year. So they're still pretty low at about 20 earthquakes per week. And that's the most exciting thing happening um, on Mauna Loa right now. Mauna Loa is still inflating, filling with magma. Occasionally, we have a pulse of deep earthquakes like this one that occurred in late 2023. Um, but really, compared to the build-up to the eruption in 2022, Mauna Loa is very quiet at present. And that's our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for this week.